Hey everybody, it's Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. We were out on the road. Stop by to see our good friend and Ford expert, Jim Wicks. And man, Jim, you have some amazing stuff in stock. We have seen some awesome cars today. And this is another car that you've got available for somebody to add to their collection. And we've looked at a lot of Shelby's. We used to see them at big auctions and things like that. But we stopped Many by times. to see you. And uh, this is a car you've got sitting right here available right now. And it is an amazing car. It is, to me, what a lot of people think of when they think of Shelby Mustang. White, blue stripe, fastback. That's exactly. When I close my eyes and, and, and think of the word Shelby, this is, you know, this is the car that I see. I, I see the 66 Shelby with the, uh, with the quarter windows and the brake scoops and the white and blue stripes. That is the absolute iconic definition. In fact, your email address was blue stripe. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, for many, yeah, for many yes, times. So this car is a really, really cool car that uh, this car uh, came out of uh, Northern California and it's as bone dry as you will ever, ever find a car. It, uh, uh, everything on the underbody is, is unbelievably good. Uh, but you'd ask a couple of questions on differences between 65 and 66. Well, because they're about know, the same basic. They body. are. The body is the same. Uh, 60, 65 Shelby's did not have these quarter windows. They had the regular Mustang louvers there. And on a 65 Shelby, you did not have these uh, brake cooling scoops. That was an improvement for 66. Uh, many people. Uh, uh, it was common for many people in 1966 to take their 65 Shelby and add these items. So you had a brand new car. So look to your newer. Look to your newer. But uh, the, the the back side glasses are, are great because the visibility that you get with those in the car is uh, is it's second to none. It's, it helps uh, tremendously. It helps tremendously. Uh, well, this car looks great. I mean. Colors well, look great, interior looks great. 66, we went on. In 65, you could have any color you wanted, as long as it was white. And you could have any stripe you wanted, as long as it was blue. <laughs> Pretty common. It was kind of the Henry Ford Model A, Model T yeah. type thinking. Uh, this, uh, this car has had some day two upgrades. Okay. This car come out of Northern California, and it seemed like all through the 70s and 80s, you never saw an untouched 65.6. They all were personalized or done something custom in, a, in, in, in many ways. But the most common thing was to uh, drop the suspension on the front like a 65 Shelby. As you can see, the car looks uh, noticeably lower. And that's, that was, they changed the suspension on the 65 Shelby. So uh, to make it handle better. Well, there was a lot of SCCA events in California, uh, yes, things like that. Yes, lots of lots so. of lots uh, of solo two autocross type things. I that, see. that you could go have fun with these cars, and that's what they did. This car's got a '67 Shelby style roll bar in it, so uh, that's an upgrade with the shoulder harness there. And that was probably something that was done for SCCA racing years yes, ago. Yeah. But fortunately, the modifications of this car don't hurt it any. They didn't hack the car up or ruin the car by doing some of this stuff. So not at all. This has had a uh, the '66 uh, Mustang GT350 came with the standard Ford GT Deluxe style steering wheel, which okay. was a plastic rimmed uh, uh, three-spoke wheel. Okay. This car has a '65 Shelby simulated wheel. Okay. Not exactly dead on the wheel, but the other thing on the cars. And the 65s had a pod that went over the center of the dash with your tachometer and right. oil pressure gauge. 66, the oil pressure gauge was in the dash, and they went to putting the tack in placement mounted on the dash. On top of and you see the Cobra emblem in yeah, the tack? Yeah, you see a little Cobra emblem on the tack. So. And that is an original 66 Shelby tack, not a reproduction. Oh, wow. That's got to be a hard piece to find. But uh, again, these cars, uh, when you say Shelby, you, you just see that white and blue car. That's all there is. <laughs> this car also features a, a, a very desirable 10-spoke alloy wheel. Uh, these cars, uh, again, came on probably just over a third of the car. The standard wheel for 66 was Magnum 500 painted wheel, okay. which had a gray finish. Right. Uh, the next step was a GT was the, the Magnum 500 wheel that got used on all the Hertz cars in Chrome. Okay. Past that, 
you went into the alloy wheel, which was more expensive. I see. But uh, they, uh, you know, total Shelby design, and they uh, really, really add to the car. This car also has a set of uh, of uh, Kelsey tires reproduction tires. Oh, okay. uh, myself and a, and a friend, Bob Gaines, uh, helped uh, help Mr. Kelsey reproduce these tires, and from the uh, he had an original one and I had an original one and there are a couple little slight differences in the one that he had and the one that I had so Mr. Kelsey had to research the molds and he had very good contacts at Goodyear and was able to get these tires reproduced for the public. So that they're so the exact correct tire. You got tires. the exact correct tire and they were a high performance special tire. Let's take a walk around this thing and check this thing out. 60, 65 and 6 Shelby came without with no outside rear view mirror. If you ordered and wanted a rear view mirror, you got this Talbot style uh, chrome bullet outside rear view mirror. Okay. Uh, both on 65 and 6. When you come and look at the front of the car, anyone who knows Mustangs knows that that is a 1966 grill. Well, the 65 grill was more of a honeycomb, okay. uh, and uh, it had uh, uh, they had removed the horse and the corral and the two bars, which I'm sure you're familiar right. with. Yep. And if it was a GT, it would have had the fog lights. Okay. But uh, they removed this uh, the whole front uh, chrome package, and they put a 1965 Shelby side emblem in the grill. Okay. <laughs> just to so. You, I guess they needed to know it was a Mustang. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that uh, I thought that made a really it cleaned up the yeah it did cleaned it up is clean. the nose of the car. The, the hood is the same on uh, uh, the '65 and sixes. There's several different variations in hoods. We won't get into that right now. This is the most common with a fiberglass overlay on a steel structure frame. This okay. would be the same frame that would have come on any Mustang, except it's got a fiberglass overlay instead of a, of a stamped steel overlay. Oh, that's interesting. When you look at the car, uh, you see the Coney shocks, which were standard on 65s and were only available on 66s till cars around around 890 or so. They they cheapened up the cars and used uh, auto light adjustables. This car is a later car, but again, with the day two upgrades, it had to have the Koenig shocks. <laughs> uh, well, that was done for handling. And uh, when you look at the car, again, you see that this car has uh, special uh, exhaust manifolds, actually headers, uh, the aluminum intake manifold, and the factory dual point distributor. And again, back to the Shelby style Le Mans Bowl 715 Holly Carburetor. Well, it's a beautiful car. And when you walk up to a 65 Shelby, you immediately notice that it's it's a little lower. And they did that by dropping the, dropping the mounting points of the upper suspension. So they did that you on the 65s uh, to start they with. They did that. And, and on the the first few 66s, okay. but after they came into standard production for 66, that became a bean, bean counter deal of, well, we can save money by, <laughs> so, but this car, you can immediately, what you can do, you won't be able to see this exactly, but anyone wants to know, they can reach down there and feel just above where the uh, control arm is mounted to the inner structure, there'll be a hole, and that would have been the locating point for the standard suspension. When you drop that hole, you drop the whole car. So, Change. so there was that was there again. Technically, a day two modification to lower this on this car, similar to a '65. '65 Shelby, oh, yes. Right. And that's what's great about talking to you. You know all that stuff. <laughs> that's well, interesting. It's, it's uh, I've had hands on these cars since uh, 1970. I bought my first Shelby uh, in uh, in 1970, and proud to say that I I still own that car. <laughs> Well, this thing is amazing. It's going to make an awesome addition to somebody's collection. Um, can't really hardly believe you want to part with it, but I guess you've got others too. Well, so. I've, I've got uh, I've got my original car, so I, I don't need another one. Yeah, well, that's true. 
it's just such a neat car, something you don't see, and, it, and there again, it's going to be a cornerstone to somebody's collection. I mean, well, this car also another '65 style uh, upgrade for performance. This car has a side exhaust. I noticed uh, that. Yeah. yeah, the '66s all came with uh, exhaust that uh, went to the back and had turn downs. Okay. Uh, in 1965, you had the side exit exhaust uh, as production. It, as you got into the end of the year, there were so many states complaining about the loud exhaust <laughs> that they knew something had to be done. I see. So, so that's why they went with full exhaust. In they 66. went with a full exhaust, which would have been standard on a uh, uh, same thing as a Mustang GT, but without the trumpet tips that would have come through the rear valance. Okay. So I mean, nothing like uh, nothing like looking out over that hood, seeing a curvy road ahead. And, and, and enjoying the car. There's nothing better than that. <laughs> well, Jim, once again, thanks for sharing this beauty with us. <laughs> We've got a ton of Ford stuff on the Jim Wicks playlist on the channel. You don't want to miss any of it. Lots of Mustang stuff, lots of Shelby stuff, and tons and tons of knowledge. So, Jim, thanks for having us All today. All right, Craig. I appreciate it. She's a beauty. And uh, good luck with it. Can't wait to see where this one ends up. Thanks for stopping, Chad.